Hello everybody, Dan Waters from Installer here. I hope you are having a marvelous day today. We continue on with our robotic process automation series, use case 23 from the center of excellence, image manipulation. Uh, there are a number of image manipulation capabilities here. What we're going to focus on today for purposes of time is the compression functionality. So a whole bunch of stuff we can do uh, compression has practical purposes all over the organization because we know that large image files or image files uh, seem to grow year on year, uh, larger, higher resolution, so on and so forth. But do we really need those for application purposes, for business purposes? Well, it depends, right? It's good to have the flexibility. But there are certain situations where you definitely want to be able to get your image to a smaller state uh, than what it currently exists at. And I can tell you that the uh, root of this particular problem actually came from when we launched Installer and we're dealing with hundreds of images that were in presentations, on our website, you name it. And uh, you know, we like our things to be very uh, straightforward to the point and lightweight. Um, and so we wanted to build something that would make our lives easier. We built this robot. Uh, and uh, obviously, uh, having perfected it somewhat, you could say, uh, we want to make that available to our clients, hence why it's a part of our center of excellence. So let's just quickly jump through our typical single slider here. Single slide. Objective, manipulate a collection of images into a desired state, i.e. we're going to compress image uh, into three different sizes actually, and we'll, we'll have a look into uh, how that works shortly. Three key benefits, sourcing of skills, experience, and or training eliminated. As you know, fiddling around with image files can be messy. You're dealing with Photoshop, you're dealing with canvas sizes, you're dealing with file formats, uh, even jumping between different file formats and different scenarios, right? You don't want to be messing around with that when you could be doing other things. Speed, consistency, and predictability. Experimentation needed to get the desired result rate reduced, i.e. Googling to be able to find out how to do something with your image man manipulation or compression, um, so on and so forth. So uh, you get rid of the research element, give it to the bot, let the bot take care of it. Um, and uh, I'd, I'd like to say out of sight, out of mind, <laughs> probably not the right thing to say exactly, but the whole point is you can be doing other tasks. Uh, design notes can be combined with other tasks. So uh, we actually, uh, uh, if you look at our use case library, we have one use case there around the uh, ID importing. So uh, we take passports and licenses and we import those for the different, essentially processing, right? We're extracting data out of those. Now, I can tell you if those image files are 20 meg or 200K or even 20K, they are going to process the same. All we're doing is we're extracting date of births, names, so on and so forth, right? That the processing function there doesn't care about the depth and size of image resolution and file size, okay? So if that's an ex computationally expensive process, well, maybe we want to compress it first, right? Um, well, there's a whole range of you know use cases to why you might specifically want to compress uh, images. Give it to the bot. Uh, can incorporate many avenues of valid validation and compliance, um, reduce IT costs by centralizing similar functions into a single point of processing, such as overnight processing, expensive software and hardware reduction. So a couple of points there real quick on the validation and compliance. Let's just say you've got your GRC tool and particular GRC sets of records for a particular event. Um, maybe you want to uh, be able to display an image within the particular record portal, right? Uh, but maybe you want different file sizes, okay? Maybe you want the original file size, but do you really want to bring that onto screen? Is it necessary? Is it better to have a thumbnail or something close to that? Uh, so having different file sizes that are the same unique identifier specific to that image record, you can have capability around that, saving your precious desktop and saving your precious bandwidth by being intelligent around it, right? Um, now, the other point there, expensive software and hardware reduction. So as you know, uh, expensive software will drive expensive hardware and vice versa, okay? As an example, uh, a lot of the image manipulation tools are expensive. Now, you might be able to reduce that cost 
by getting some of these functionalities over to the bot. The bot doesn't need Photoshop, it doesn't need GIMP, which is open source and you don't need to pay for anyway. But my point is, give it to the bot and I bet you, you can reduce in some aspect, some of your software footprint and maybe even some of your hardware footprint, at least at least the, the, the type of hardware, uh, the highly spec hardware that you might be uh, needing to use there. So uh, interesting points uh, coming from a simple concept. Process architecture, barely worth discussing, but uh, identify target, create new file or files in this case, send confirmation. So this will send a confirmation email to our uh, email address that we set up on Gmail for demo purposes. Um, just, you know, obviously it's, it's nice to be able to see that in different situations, right? Add-ons, dynamic processing. So this can operate off a schedule. It can detect file presence in a queue or you can message the bot and tell it, hey, would you, we'd like you to go out to this place or please search for this. Maybe you want to grab uh, some photos of Amazon, right? Or Shutterstock for all kinds of different reasons, inventory reasons. Uh, maybe it's, uh, you know, research reasons. Maybe it's you're building a presentation and you've got a robot accelerator to go and essentially position that presentation for you so it constructs 60, 70, 80% of it for you and then you put the bells and whistles on, right? All of this is possible. All this is saving you time. Scalable processing, backup functions, compliance, image recognition, validation, all different tasks that can combine well with this image manipulation compression space, okay? So without further ado, let's quickly run through the bot. Let's adjust our pieces on the screen. To show you the moving components here, we have in this directory two files. We have an individual, uh, looks like a medical professional, um, and I think that that file size there is about 9 meg, there you go, and the wooden origami, 8 meg, okay? So what this is going to do, it's going to create three different file types. Well, I should say create three different files, JPEGs, but it will create a 1000 KB, 500 KB, 200 KB version of each. So we've got uh, smaller versions that will uh, be made available to us. And what we'll do is we'll check the uh, quality at the end and I think you'll be pretty impressed. I can't tell the difference between them, which might not be a, a major accolade to be honest, if I can't tell. However, um, pretty, pretty tight run thing, right? So uh, let's move this over here and uh, let's run this from the IDE. And we're going to jump over to our process directory and can see that stuff is being populated there. So we've got our uh, 104 file and uh, we're creating a 200 KB, not to exceed 200 KB version of that file. And the bot, all the algorithms and stuff, you're abstracted away from that. You don't need to make decisions, nothing. It takes care of everything for you, um, which is great. So you're gonna see this is park in a park itself, probably around the 180, 190 range shortly below 200, uh, 190, there you go. Um, and then we're doing the same thing, but to a 500 KB uh, level. So if you wanted to run a more optimized approach of this, we're just going with the uh, blunt blade approach here for demo purposes, but to be smarter around this, you could take the file and you would create your 1000 or your largest file version first. And you would use that as a stepping stone to then, to then go to your next smallest version. So we would go five, uh, 1,000 to 500 to 200 here, and that would save a lot of time. Okay, so you can see this is almost done. We're already onto the next file, which is our 960 file, which happens to be the wooden origami. And you can see that size reducing very nicely there. Obviously this being a demo environment um, and numerous things running on my machine at this time, uh, including uh, recording instr instrumentation, uh, you would expect this to run far faster um, if it was running in, in a background process on appropriately spec hardware and not painting all of this stuff to the screen. So kicking along, 
down here at the bottom. That's nice. It's uh, both of those files sat at 955. What I'm going to do, I'm going to take this 1000 KB version. I'm going to sit it right there. It might be a little bit hard to see over the recording, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the 200 version of the same file and I'm going to put them side by side here. Now, again, might be a little difficult, but I can tell you, uh, Scout's Honor, I cannot see a single difference between those two files. Um, I'm sure that there are uh, graphical experts that probably can see uh, small artifacts, so on and so forth. But I'm looking at the shadow here, right? The shadow, I'm looking at the grain, it's the sharpness of the edges. This shadow here, I really cannot tell the difference. Texture looks the same. Um, so, you know, great result, right? Um, so, what we'll do, we'll close those uh, and very quickly uh, just going to bring over this email. And you can see, just received the email here. Let's open him up. Task is completed, a total of two files has been compressed. So, you know, nice to get a little no notification like that. I actually think that the communication with the RPA over uh, email is very handy. Uh, gives a little bit more of a sense that you, you know, it's, it's like a human function interacting with something. Um, makes it a little bit more personable, but it's also highly practical too, right? So we can get more into those with some of our other use cases and explanations. But for now, that closes out our uh, image manipulation compression use case. We hope that uh, everybody enjoyed it and uh, you put the, put the thinking hat on, see how this might apply to your organization um, and uh, would love to hear in comments or through direct reach out and only too happy to share some suggestions with you of, of how this could be deployed in your organization. Thank you, take care and we will see you next time.